Mesdames et Messieurs, chers collègues, nous vous remercions pour votre ponctualité et nous continuerons la séance de cet après-midi. Et nous avons le plaisir de suivre la communication intitulée « Unknown Georgian Source for the Introduction to Barlam Romance » de M. El Gouja Hintibize, qui est professeur de philologie et directeur de l'Institut de littérature géorgienne à l'Université d'État Ivane Jarheshvile de Tbilisi. Um, professor, please, you have yes. the floor. Uh, dear colleagues, before starting of my speech, allow me to express my gratitude to all of you and especially to the organizers of this beautiful uh, colloquium. It is very important to speak about the very, very a famous example of su such a comparative uh, literature. Uh, I would like to express uh, rather sorry that I can't speak any <laughs> any French and understand too, but but I I began in English. <laughs> well, well, I speak about the creation about of uh, Greek version very famous Greek version, European version of this famous work, and, and about the creator, this creator, the, the author of this. Well, the edifying story of Barlam and the Yosaf, or simply Barlam Romans, as it is sometimes called in Byzantine studies, is considered the most significant and popular story of Greek prose of the Byzantine period. The plot of the work, that is the binding framework, you know that originating from India, has come down to, you know, through Georgian and Arabic edition as well. Reworked from the standpoint of Christian and Muslim religious outlooks. This Byzantine story of Barlam and Yuasap came to us in manuscripts of the 11th and later centuries. In the 11th century, it was translated into Latin twice, and then in 12th century and subsequent centuries, almost into all languages on Europe and Asia Minor, from Greek and Latin versions, becoming very popular in late medieval Europe. This amazing popularity is due to the fact that it is an extremely attractive work from the you know, perspective of the uh, medieval reader, which is also due to its polygenre. It is a hagiographic work and that uh, you know, establishes in Greek Christian calendar the names of two saints, Saint Barlam and Saint Yosap. At the same time, it is a polemical and dogmatic essay. This story argues against pagan religions and clearly conveys and explains the main Christological dogmas. Medieval theology is diluted with simple oriental parables and an attractive plot which along with traditional medieval religious Disputes is embellished with love episodes too. That is why in scientific literature, the work is rarely called a romance, a dogmatic romance or a religious romance. In Byzantine studies, when studying the problematic issues of the edifying story of Barlam and Yuasaf, due attention is not paid to the introduction of the work. The introduction with the prologue is perhaps the only part of the Barlam romance where the author talks about himself and about the details of the creation of the work. This part of story, I mean the introduction with the prologue and the lemma. Lemma is an expanding title of this Greek version leads us to the Georgian Laura of Athos. The name of Laura is a Iberon, Iberian's Laura. As well as to, Euth to Saint Euthymius the Athenite, 
whose authorship has already been almost unanimously recognized in the Europe, European Byzantine studies of the last decades. I will point out just one detail. The author introduces the Greek reader to the country India of this narrative brought to him by a monk of the monastery of Saint Saba, monk's name is Ioan, as Ethiopia. Yes, this is from, from this lemma, the inner country of Ethiopia, so-called Indians. Several instances of such confusion are noted in medieval Latin texts too, but in the case of Barlam, in my point, this confusion leads us to the Georgian monastery of Athos and in particular to Saint Euthymius. In the old versions of the translations of the Holy Scripture into the Eastern languages, Syrian, Armenian, and Georgian, Ethiopian queen and Ethiopian eunuch in Acts, Acts, you know, the New Testament, we are trans transferred to Queen of India and Indian eunuch. This still remains in Georgian version. Euthymius translated proper names and terms in his translation, in his translation from Greek to Georgian, on the basis on Bible. The text of the Bible named the Old Testament namely the Old Testament, which was in the Georgian monastery of Iviron on Athos at that time. This is the uh, special name, Oshki Bible, Oshki, the monastery's name, was copied in the Georgian monastery of Oshki in Georgia by the order of Ioane Tornike, a monk from Athos and former Georgian commander, and brought to Athos by him. In it, the Greek Ethiopia is transferred to India. Not one case, but a lot of cases are there. Particularly interesting are these cases from Psalms. Some places are these, some examples. Euphemius at night translated the Psalms into Georgian from Greek. Georgian translation, just now they canonized, by Saint Georg, Georgi the Atonite, Georgi the Atonite, and let us say Georgi is a, a name, the Atonite, the successor of Euthymius' work on Athos, are canonized in Georgian church, um, church today, is based on the translation of Euthymius. In all Georgian translations of the Psalms preserved to this day, the Greek Ethiopia is transferred as India in these places. The same is attested in other old Georgian works translated from Greek. For an example of this phenomenon, I can hypothesize that in the cited uh, cases in the Georgian translation, Ethiopian was understood as black colored. It is noticed that Ethiopia, Greek word, was used in classical Greek writers in general reference to the colored inhabitant of South Africa, with two, you know, observable roots: Aito, it's a burn, and Ops, it's an appearance. Hindo in the old Georgian language is not always an ethnic name, but sometimes means a person of black color. Well, just now follow the, uh, follow the tradition established by Greek and Latin manuscripts in Europe of the Medi uh, Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Saint John of Damascus was considered the author of the Barlam Romans. European Byzantine studies at the end of the 19th century questioned this tradition. Scholarly critics drew, uh, uh, drew attention to the 11th century Georgian report 
the great Georgian writer Saint Euphemius the Athenite had translated from Georgian to Greek Balakhwar, Abu Kura, and a few more other writings from Georgian into Greek. This attribution was found to be supported by the 11th century Latin translation and a couple of Greek manuscripts of Barlaam. Today, in the European, uh, to the uh, footsteps of uh, Euro Georgian studies, scholars, European medievalists, have recognized that the author of Barlam Romans is the famous Georgian monk, Saint Euphemius the Athenite. A uh, yes, a significant role of this uh, final recognition of this um, uh, this thesis is. Uh, in Europe was played by publication of the Byzantine Institute of Sheir Nabe under the leadership of Robert Falk. The clarification of the question of the authorship of Barlam Romans with light assumptions was typical mainly for the Middle Ages and sometimes for the studies of the first half of the previous century. An unknown monk of the monastery of Saint Saba, Saint Saba just near Jerusalem monastery, Yoan, who brought this story to the holy city, named in Barlam's lemma, was considered to be the author of this work. As it uh, is known, the, uh, the old Greek manuscripts of the story begins with a long title, as I said, uh, or the lemma, it uh, is this time an edifying story from the inner land of the Ethiopians, called the land of the Indians, thence brought to the holy city by Yoan the monk, an honorable man and virtuous of the monastery of Saint Sabas. It is uh, this lemma, the, our, this Yohan uh, from this, um, the monastery of Saint Saba, whose identity is specified in manuscripts, Greek manuscripts, of course, I say, I mean, and Latin too, as John of Sinai, John of Tabernese, or mainly John of Damascus, based on the same Yohan from the lemma, some researchers have suggested the anonymous Yuan of the 6th century or Yuan the Ethiopian traveler of the 9th century as the author of Barlam. One opinion was uh, Hans Ottenberg's and uh, another was the um, uh, Kajdan, such, such a Russian uh, researcher. Subsequent studies were based on the discovery of the fact seen thing at Barlam and Yoasap in Byzantine sources. This is Paul Peters' research, very famous. The search for sources of theological passages that are in, uh, inserted in the Eastern narrative of Balakhwar, this is the researches for Franz Dolger and Robert Falks, connected of the plot of the Greek Barlam with earlier, and very interesting that connection of the plot of Greek Barlam with earlier Oriental Arabic and the Georgian works was made by uh, famous Daniel Gimaret and personally by me too. In itself, the personality of Yohan, or John in English, of course, who uh, brought this story or book to the holy city, which is mentioned in the lemma, is certainly interesting. Referring to the narrator of bearer of some stories is typical of medieval writings, which does not always indicate real facts. This basis can be found in the assumptions of Paul Peters that Johan from the Lemma is a fict fictitious and not a real person. I think this assumption is less uh, plausible. 
Barlam's lemma is not a general and vague reference to some stories, uh, uh, storytellers. It is specifically indicated here that the monk of the monastery of Saint Saba, Ioan, in Greek, Ioannu Monaco, Monestu Agio Saba, brought this story to the holy city, and he is an honorable man and virtuous. Andros Timiuk I Evaretu. For the last decade of the previous century, the view of, you know, considering Saint Alphemius as the author of Barlam became relevant. It is therefore natural that the search for the identity of the man Kioan who brought the Indian narrative to the holy city must have begun. Uh, in the Yiviron documents, Yiviron, uh, you, I said, Monastery of Ethos. That's why I paid special attention to Giovanni Tornike. This is, this is famous, Euphemius the other night, fresco from Ethos, about uh, 11th century. And this one is Giovanni Tornike, fresco from Yiviron. 10th century fresco. Well, let us continue. Well, I paid attention to monk Yoan, who brought the Indian narrative to the holy city, must have been began in the Iviron documents, as I said. That's why I paid special attention to Yoan Tornike, a monk of Iviron monastery at Athos former great general of the Georgian kingdom. He was a highly respected person at the royal court of Byzantium. The owner of the highest title, Patrick, immediately before the reign of the Byzantine emperor Basil II in 976, one of the commander, Bartas Sclerus, rebelled against the Byzantine royal court and threatened the queen and the minor princes. In order to defeat the rebellion Byzantine leader, the royal court, Byzantine royal court, sent Georgian monk Ioanne Tornike from Athos to help from the Georgian kingdom. He went to the east to Georgia, and in 1976, 1979, fought the rebels with a 12,000 strong Georgian army and returned victorious to Athos with the great honor of the Byzantine royal court with another, you know, honorary title, the title of Sinkelos. He brought a lot of uh, wealth in Iviron, books and even monks from Georgia. Ioanne Tornike was, you know, honored with all sorts of secular honors, and he did not forget this for a long time in monasticism. This is especially indicated by the narrator of his life, Saint uh, Giorgio George the Athenite. He refers to Ioanne Tornike just with the same epithets. In Georgian, Gant Kmulmanda Sachinoman Katsma, honorable and famous man, and notes that he remembered his secular honor for a long time. Moreover, Ioanne Tornike himself was proud of his secular honor in his colophon. Colophon, in Georgian, they say, call it a testament attached to the book of Samotche. This book is a Georgian translation of um, John Moscow's Limonarian, which he ordered for the uh, census or copy at the Oshki Monastery during his stay in the East and brought back to the Aethos Monastery upon his return. Ioanne Tornike, in his prayer to God, mentioned his secular titles given to him by the kings with the, um, with the same period. His word is here. To pray for ourselves. First, Giovanni Tornike, 
and now Ioannes Sinkelos, as titled by the saint kings, who for the love of God gave the earthly glory to find the heavenly glory. In my opinion, this colophon of Ioanne Tornike, which is a quite extensive theological treatise, is one of the literary sources for the prologue and introduction to Barlaam. It is typical for the author of Barlaam and Barlaam Romans to base the uh, Christological, it is uh, apologetic or dogmatic or polemical passages of his work on the proven theological literature or of the great and famous ancestors. You know, a lot of passages are there from John of Damascus, Dogmatics, Menologion by Simeon, the Metaphrast, Apology of Aristides, and other writings of Holy Fathers. The prologue and introduction establishes a, a connection with um, uh, the colophon of Johanne Tornike in the architectonics of the description of the incarnation and by the sending of the apostles and holy fathers and hermits too by the Lord for the salvation of the human race. This connection is also indicated by the mention of the same gospel parable both in prologue and in testament. This is famous parable about talent from Matthew. Apparently, Ioanne Tornike did not forget his secular titles and he, a monk and one of the builders of the Iviran monastery, was also commemorated there with his honor. Moreover, he was always mentioned with secular honors and not only on Mount Athos, but also in his homeland, in Georgian monastery circles. Georgian sources point, point to the connection of Ioanne Tornike mainly with the great Georgian monastic cultural center of Oshki. According to the documents of the Athos monastery, Oshki, a well-known region in South Georgia, is the residence of the Chordvaneli family, family the builders of Iviron Monastery, and members of the family was this famous great general, a great uh, person, great commander, Ioanne Tornike. During his uh, this period in uh, 1977, the book of Samotche mentioned above was written in the Oshki Monastery, commissioned by Ioanne Tornik and brought by Atos, as I said. The two-volume Georgian Bible, the greatest treasure of Georgian monastic culture, copied in Oshki in, nine, in uh, 978, by his, by Tornike's order and brought by him to Athos, is currently kept in the Georgian library of Iviron. From Oshki, Ioanne Tornike brought many other books to Athos, as well as many monks, as I mentioned. This huge book, the Athos Bible, transcribed under his direction, has several scribes who make notes at the end of each book of Bible, blessing Ioanne Tornike, noting his secular honors, titles, Patrick and Sinkelos. Barlam's lemma reveals another secret. The monk Ioan arrived in the holy city from the monastery of Saint Saba. Ioannu monachu monestu agiu Saba. John the monk of the monastery of Saint Saba. Therefore, for centuries, he was identified with a certain monk named Johann of the Saint uh, Saba monastery complex near Jerusalem. Today is known as a Mar Saba. Well, uh, there is no indication in Georgian sources whether Johann Tornike 
Eva visited Jerusalem and the famous Saint Saba Laura. The colophon of Ioanne Tornike helps us to solve this dilemma. This is how this colophon, I say the colophon of Ioanne Tornike, ends. This holy book was written in the great Oshki, in the place of the holy Baptist, when Saba was the head of the monastery. Christ blessed him. Therefore, the Bible and somewhat heavy are copied in 978 and 977 at the Oshki Monastery during the direction of Saba. Saba was the abbot of the monastery. A year later, 979 or 978, in the same place of the other, also Ioanne Tornike, another theological book was written. This is book, you know, uh, called Sarmon, some Cosmos, this scholar of ice about the uh, relatives of um, John Chrysostom. The scriber begins with the colophon by mentioning the names of the persons who ordered the copy of the book, of course, to Ioanne Tornike too, and ends with a reference to the place where the book was copied and continues. Let us uh, read not Georgian text, but uh, translation. This holy book was written in the great Laura Oshki, in the place of the holy and great Baptists, when the Saint Father Saba was the head, may God be glorified. Apparently, in his native monastery, the abbot of Oshki, Saba was called Saint Father Saba. It is expected that the book brought to Ethos by a monk of the Oshki monastery, Ioanne Tornike, during, his abbey, during the abbey of the Saint Father Saba, was probably named by the translator of this book, by Saint Euthymius, as a book brought by the honorable and virtuous man, the monk of Saint Saba monastery. This is how it is mentioned in the lemma, just this name, way, of the almost all the old Greek manuscripts. Mones to Hagiu Saba, or sometimes Mones to Hagiu Patras Hemon Saba. Later on, naturally, in the minds of Greek and Latin scribes, the monk of Saint Saba Monastery was perceived as a monk of the great Laura of Saint Saba, Mar Saba, due to the great popularity of the letter. We also need to focus on one fact. As I mentioned above, according to Barlam Roman's lemma, the bearer of the story in the holy city was the monk of the Saint Saba Monastery. It is unlikely that the author of Barlam, if he believed that the monk of the great and famous Saba Laura was the bearer of the story, would call him that way. The fact is the great Palestinian asket, asket you know, of the 5th, 6th century Saba, inherited the name sanctified. In Greek it is Agnia, Agias Menos. And he was predominantly called that uh, way both in Middle Ages and later. Blessed or holy in Greek, you know, Hosios is established as an epithet of his spiritual height in most cases, both in medieval sources and in later ones. In the old versions of the life of Saint Saba, and it is translated in Georgian in 8th century, it was translated in 8th century, and we have a copy of this, 
and in the established tradition of the ascetic abode of Saba, like Ada, uh, Ada's under his care, is called not a Laura. And but um, he was called Laura, only Laura, and not a monastery. You know, that is why the largest manuscript um, monastery complex of Saint Saba, Mar Saba, is mentioned both in Old Greek and Modern Greek sources as the Laura of Blessed, O Holy, let us translate, Saba the Sanctified. Uh, Laura to Hosiu Saba Agiasmenu, or sometimes Yera Laura to Hosiu Saba to Hagiasmenu. So the honorable and virtuous men of the Lema of the Barlam Romans, Monk Ioan, is not a monk of the Laura of the blazed Saba the sanctified but a monk of a monastery, the abbot of which is some Saint Saba, uh, Father Saba, Ioannu Monachu Monestu Hagiu Saba. Before summarizing my speech, let me show and explain some, uh, some um, you know, presentation here. Yes, this is, I said, famous fresco from 10th century in uh, this monastery. Johann Tornik, a very famous person he was. Well, just this is the eighth monastery just now in Greek. The same to the same to This is the Mooshki Monastery, just now in Turkey territory, southern uh, it is brought to from 973, 976, just 976 return um, Johanna Tornike to this uh, area from, from Greek. This is Oshki Monas, today's hot house. This is famous. Well, this is this just the history of only a defying story. This is this lemma about, I said. Well, this is just Salmon. When the saints, Father Saba was the head of, was the abbot of this monastery. From there, he was. When Andros Timiu Kai Evaretu, just now, a Laura to Hasiu Saba Hagiasmenu. This is the name of this. Saba complex monastery, famous Mar Saba, in Greek, of course, today too. And Yera Laura Otto. Well, okay, just let us summarizing. We must follow and say the religious novel, very popular among the peoples of Europe in the period immediately preceding the Renaissance, Barlam Romans was written in Greek by a monk and within 10 years, the spiritual leader of the Aethos monastic corporation, Saint Euthymius the Athenite. The plot of Barlam is based on a narrative ori um, um, originating from India, which was formed into hagiographic work in the Georgian language. Barlam Romans was uh, translated from the Georgian Balavariani and expanded with polemical dogmatic passages or quotations and parables from the Bible, from the written of Holy Fathers and from a geographic um, works too. Before Byzantine, Georgian, uh, Byzantine and Georgian studies, researches, uh, researchers found that uh, the author of Barlam uh, uh, is uh, Saint Euthymius the Athenite, an unknown monk Yoan from the monastery of Saint Saba, who brought this story to the holy city, named in so-called Barlam's le Lemma, was considered to be the author of this work. The beginning of the story, prologue and introduction with the Lemma, 
or lemma yes where the uh, author talks about himself and about the details of creation of the work lets us to the monastic corporation of Athos and especially to the Laura of Iviron. The only monk in the Laura of Iviron, a former famous secular person who brought great wealth to Athos from the East along with valuable books, with the, um, was the monk Ioane Tornike, a former famous Georgian commander. Ioane Tornike was always mentioned with secular honors, not only on Mount Athos, but also in Georgian monastic, monastic circles, mainly in the South Georgian monastery of Oshki, where 976-979 he ordered to rewrite of many secret books and brought them to Athos. Among them was the book Samotche, Georgian translation of John Moscus Limonarion, with the colophon by Ioanne Tornike. This colophon is one of the literary sources for the prologue and introduction to Barlam. This is indicated by the similarity of composition of these two works, uh, yes, and by the mention of the same parable from the Gospel. This colophon and some other colophons explain who the monk Johan of the Lemma of, um, of Greek Barlam is. This mysterious Johan or John, the monk of honorable men and the virtues of the monastery of Saint Saba, was Johan Etornike, a monk of Iviron Monastery of Athos and the former great commander of Byzantium. He brought this story to Athos, the holy city or holy mountain. This was always mentioned the Athos Corporation in, um, um, in sources. From the monastery Oshki, the abbot of which was Saint Saba. The words of Lema, monk of monastery of Saint Saba, indicates a monastery where the head or abbot is a certain Saint Saba, and not the famous Laura near Jerusalem Mar Saba, which is mentioned both in the Old Greek and modern Greek sources as Laura of the Blessed Saba, the Sanctified, uh, Laura to Hagius Saba Agiasmenus. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>